uh, from it, the documents, or it's not possible that will compile. We should have text only. So text only, these uh, editors are good. You can also use WordPad or if you want, but this, this is not a good editor because you have no coloration of uh, the command you use, no things like that. So now we have a distribution. I told you distribution holds the file we need and especially the engines. Uh, engines are the compilator, the main part of the compilator. So uh, this there is essentially two uh, compilators, LaTeX, which produce from tech file a DVI file. DVI is, DVI is device independent. This is the format that was invented by Donald Knuth. If you remember, this is the man who wrote tech. And uh, you have PDF la LaTeX. This is for uh, compiling directly to uh, PDF. Uh, the PDF is, I think, the best way today to to send uh, that types of document. But maybe you want DVI files for um, uh, backup purpose or thing like that because they are uh, very lightweight compared to PDF. Uh, but if you want, you have also two converters, which is called DVI to PS or DVI to PDF. Uh, that allow you to convert uh, the document obtained wi with LaTeX to other formats. You have plenty of others, but they are not included in the basic distributions. So this is how you use it um, all the time. I mean, just uh, the name of the command, the, do uh, the dot tech file, and you have the, the output in the same directory. Uh, for those those who will use uh, TechMaker or you know, these editors I told you about. Um, you'll see that uh, you have in the uh, configuration of the software, which is, this is well explained, um, it, it, um, it builds uh, automatically this common line. You don't have to open a common line somewhere uh, in your computer if you're not familiar with it. You just click on a button and, okay, all goes well. You find uh, then your file in the working direc directory in the directory while you had uh, the, the, the source file, the tech file. Okay, everything's clear to this point. If you have questions, so sum up. You write a source file, a tech file, with the extension .tech. You make it go through um, a PDF lat LaTeX or LaTeX and you obtain either a DVI file or a PDF file, which is the document you want at the end. Okay? So now we'll see how to write this document because, okay, we have all the process, but we need the beginning to have the, the end. So this is a very, very basic document. This, you, merely you can't uh, obtain um, a, um, um, a smaller document. First, you need a document class uh, command. So you'll see this is a, a command. You have backslash, the name of the command, and then an argument between curly braces. Uh, this is the, the class you want to use. The class is what define how things will look uh, by default. I mean, so this is the beginning, the first line of every text file. You write it, and then you forgot about everything else. Um, then you have, what, what is this? Is, th is this a command? No, this is a, an environment. So um, this is the main part of the environment. This is um, mostly the same like body command in uh, HTML. It says the browser uh, for HTML or here, uh, the compiler, that, okay, this is where the document starts really. Every text is meant for printing, and we will start to write a document. And then we have text, only text. Okay, so I write very basis of, the, of every computer langu language. Uh, you write hello world. So 
the output is the page you see, so it's maybe a little literal. So here's the text that is on that page. You, you could have seen it here in the corner. Okay, so we can do better, far better, I think. Ah, so a document. You, what you can see here, we have up to the page you have document class. This is always here, I told you. Then you have plenty on of things, but then what you find, I told you it's always there. This is the document environment. So before this uh, document environment, this is called preamble. This is the beginning of your file. In the preamble, you have information like in the header part of an HTML file. This is some other information that might be useful for the compiler to build your uh, document. Uh, first, we have a command which is called title. Okay. Uh, in it, we've put some dirty things. My first. Then there is a command uh, which is called please <laughs> react, which is called LaTeX. Okay. Or are you completely lost? Or you or just to, uh, I mean, to asleep, to answer? <laughs> no problem. If you're just asleep, I I go through, and then you will look you will look the slides, and okay, everything everything will be okay. But please react a, a little bit. So we have a LaTeX command, which is supposed to produce something, but we don't know what, and then document. So it's we can read it. My first LaTeX document. Then we have a command which is called, thank you, <laughs> author. Uh, this is my name inside. Um, okay, this is the end of the preamble. And inside the preamble, we have another command uh, which has argument or no? Okay, please, no argument. So then uh, an empty line, then some text with a another time the LaTeX command, and uh, then we say goodbye at the end. So, what, um, okay, what can we see here? Uh, I've underlined spaces in the source text, so you can see our break lines, our real break lines. I mean, I wrote exactly that in the text file. When you have uh, a new line, this is a new line. Uh, and you see in the title uh, command, we have four spaces. What is the output now? We obtain that. Can you see the four spaces I laid between uh, my and first? My first I take document, which is the title. No. Okay. Uh, what the LaTeX command was used for? It's to produce the LaTeX logo, the logo type. S and um, the author is used to typeset the author of the document. Oh, sorry. Um, and then, why make title? This is the only common we don't understand here. Or, 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 we, or do we agree about that? We understand all common, but we don't understand make title. In fact, make title uh, just make use of what title and author have done before. So title and author prepare something. And when I use make title, this d uh, it just prints um, my first LaTeX document and uh, my name and the date. You see, because the date we don't we didn't set it, it uh, any, um, anywhere. So you can see that uh, the document was uh, was compiled on the 13 of January, not today. This is an old document I print for you. Okay. Then okay, um, there is something wrong on this document. Can you see it? Yes, we have a problem at the end of the document. Um, this uh, little A with a ring is not on the screen. So, uh, in fact, this is a problem of encoding. Uh, this is always the problem when you talk about markup languages. Uh, this is the same for uh, HTML because uh, documents uh, are meant for I mean, the text has to be encoded. That means uh, you have to find a way to 
uh, tell to the computer, okay, this is a E, this is a A. Okay, so we are seeing us uh, numbers. Uh, we are seeing them numbers. Sorry, um, and uh, then uh, we can say, okay, this this was a A, this was a E. So here, in fact, uh, we had a numbers that the compiler shouldn't understand. So you say, okay, well, this is a number I don't understand. This is a number I don't know what to do with. So I don't output anything, uh, even an A, because it, it, it doesn't know uh, if it was an A before the ring on it. So here is the solution. This is the first package we've seen. Uh, so I told you package are like uh, libraries in other languages. So Sometimes they are also called package in uh, other languages, it depends, but it's si slightly the same thing. And uh, you can have many encodings. Is here or just four m the, four mon uh, the four more common um, encoding you can find uh, today. Uh, so um, if you are on Windows, it, it's one of uh, Latin uh, often. If you're uh, on Mac, uh, if it's an old Mac, it's Apple Mac. If it's more recent, it, it could be uh, you. Uh, but he wanted to do it on his own computer, not to prepare only um, a main uh, um, ma manuscript and uh, send to uh, the printer that will do the job to make a copy. He wanted to prepare all on the computer. So uh, in he uh, invented the uh, tech. Uh, it was released so in uh, 1978, and uh, that might in, uh, interest some of you. This is a Turing complete l language. You can do uh, mostly every calculation you want on it. Um, this go as far as uh, lambda calculus for those uh, who knows a bit about that. We can discuss it uh, during the break. So, uh, when did we go from tech to LaTeX? So this is Leslie Lamport. Uh, um, he was a, u uh, um, a user of uh, tech. Uh, uses this a lot, but he thought it was too um, ground level, too uh, low level for him. So he used tech to prepare something, some language with higher level um, and some interesting uh, part of it is that is a markup language. So what is a markup language? You may know some markup languages. Uh, first line uh, sounds really familiar to some of you. No? The first line? It's HTML? No? <laughs> Please react a, li a little. This will be a uh, little um, less longer for you, shorter, I mean, this will be shorter for you and better for me. Uh, so, and the second line is LaTeX. So you can see this, the similarity, the, the idea of markup languages is to put together uh, data and uh, formatting information as text, only text. Um, and then, um, a browser or a compiler will, will transform it in a document that you can see and is purely graphic. So this allows the separation between the semantic, this is what you want to say, the, the, the what you make the document, and the presentation, which is quite important because this is what others see when they have your document in hand. And this is here, we have a lot to learn, in fact, because semantic, uh, this is your job. I'm not here for that. So for today, first we'll see a little about uh, syntax and uh, the compilation process, how you, you come from a, f um, a tech file, a LaTeX file, uh, to a document, a pretty doc document that you can send to others. Uh, we will build uh, our first document together and uh, I will tell more then about how to separate things, paragraphs, sections, how to have a, how to have a table of contents, um, and um, about how to make things 
maybe more pretty, uh, larger phones, uh, a smaller one, or things like that. I insist if I say something you don't understand because uh, either my English is bad or because I use uh, words you don't know, uh, please stop me immediately. And if it's not important, we'll see later at the break. So first, about the syntax, because this is a language, so we should learn a little about syntax. Um, sometimes we can ask ourselves why I should learn another language. I know plenty of languages. Uh, why uh, each time I want to do something else, I should learn another language. This is uh, the, the, the most important thing in this kind of view, that uh, if you learn languages, it's easier to learn other languages. So learn plenty of languages. All, all languages you can learn, learn it. You'll see, so we have said that latter is about marking, is marking languages. So we have two ways to mark things. Uh, first is comments. This is uh, a backslash. The name of the command, so you will see later, we have plenty of name of comments, and you can write your own comments if you want, than in any languages. Um, first, in square brackets, you have optional arguments. The, there can be many optional arguments. Then uh, you have the real arguments, and the mandatory arguments, which are in curly braces. Um, environments is the other kind of uh, markup things. And uh, you can see that this is quite similar to comments. In fact, this is a first command, which is called begin, OK? I feel you lost, completely lost. <laughs> oh, it's, it's okay. Here, you, you can see that this is exactly the, the syntax we described uh, earlier, except that we have curly braces before optional arguments, but this is the same. Okay? Yes? And the environment is ended by an end command. Okay. So, and in between, you have the text that is influenced by the argument. Uh, this take this as uh, you know, uh, that is in, in um, HTML when we say a tag, an open tag say something about uh, what follows, and, and then tag say, okay, it's over. We're not, it's not bold anymore. It's not centered anymore. Or things like that. So, as you can see. Uh, any characters can't be seen as just text. I s in between, I say it's influenced text, but we can't put anything because some things may be uh, interpreted as comments. Okay, so we have special characters, which are the first of the color braces that were used to group things. So it was used to group arguments, as you've seen before. Um, so if you want to enter a curly braces in your text, you should tell LaTeX that this is not a curly braces of the language, but a real curly braces. So you just escape it. This is something you might know from um, a shell, um, shell scripting and things like that. No? Anyone know about shell scripting? OK. So you can. Because this is a language, you can um, have the idea to put comments. This is the purpose of the percent. Uh, when you put a percent, the entire line after the, the percent is uh, the percent character is uh, a, com uh, a comment. So you can't write a real comment after it on the line. Well, you can also escape it. This is um, uh, then you know the back the backslash. Oh, uh, and there is something, okay, there is an error here, uh, I'm sorry. So the backslash you have seen before, it's the command, uh, so forget the, the fourth line, uh, this is an error. So um, the backslash you have seen, this is for uh, the starting of a comment, so if you want to really to put a backslash in your text, you have to use a command. 
So here you have the list, the fourth line you forget. Uh, about the other special characters, we'll see later on why they are used for. But keep in mind that if something goes wrong, maybe it's just you forgot some special characters, forgot to escape it. Wait, yes. Yes, uh, this is exactly what I said. Fourth, fourth line is false. This is an error. Uh, you don't keep it. It's you just throw away. Uh, the fourth line is not right. Uh, in fact, the command that is on the right, uh, backslash, backslash, uh, sorry, backslash, backslash, is used but not to typeset a backslash. There is no use, another use for that. So we'll see later also. So now um, you we know that LaTeX is a language, so we will write a file with LaTeX commands with with text, and we want to produce a document. So how what do we need to produce this document? First, you need a LaTeX distribution. Uh, this is the this is kind of big software that hold all the files you will need to uh, compile your document. So uh, you just ask it when you need a new library and it will get it for you. And um, maybe anything is uh, automatized, so automatized, so no problem with that. Uh, the main one are TechLive, MicTech, and MacTech. Uh, MicTech is mainly intended for Windows. MacTech mainly intended for macOS. But TechLive works for all, so you can take uh, TechLive if you want. Then you can use a text editor, OK, s just to type your code. So I have BI, Emacs. Uh, this is more for uh, Linux, Unix people. Uh, then you have for Windows people or some Mac OS people, TechMaker, Technic Center, TechWorks. You choose whatever suits you. Uh, I always used uh, TechMaker, which is a pretty good one. Now you use what you want. Uh, what about Word? So never write code with Word. This is the rule for all languages. I said because sometimes you see on forums people that say, "Oh, I don't, I can't understand. I have a document. It's a file with the extension .tech. It should compile, but I can't." And then you get the document and you open it with Word. In fact, this is a fully TF8, so maybe check. Uh, if you do, don't know how to check, uh, we'll see, but just try to compile a document. If it doesn't output what you were thinking, it should output. This is because this is not the right encoding. Um, and for uh, Unix and Linux, uh, it today it's, uh, it's mostly UTF-8, but you can find all the uh, encoding. And this is all available on the internet if, you, uh, if you're not sure about which one you could use. Now, where to put uh, this command? Why do you think? We have, you know, we have two parts in the document. So the first is the preamble. Then we have the body of the document. Where it should go? This, in the preamble. This is perfectly logical. Uh, so we put, here, we put it here in the, in the preamble, uh, mostly at the beginning, because we think that it's very important for the compiler to understand uh, what's following, if, it's as if it has uh, uh, already loaded uh, this package. So we put it at the beginning, and the output is finally correct. So I used uh, UTF-8 because I'm on a Linux machine, but uh, you use whatever uh, is suitable for you. And this is whatever is suitable for the file, in fact, because you even under Windows, you can get a file that has been uh, produced uh, on a Linux machine, so it will be in uh, Unicode, in UTF-8, for example. And you get it on your Windows machine, you want to compile it. Don't modify the use package uh, common uh, with the uh, input enc, because, uh, in fact, the, encode is, uh, the encoding hasn't changed because you load it. But if you change the encoding, yes, you need to change the command. Is that clear about encoding? Mostly, OK. Um, so uh, another thing here, 
you, you might see it's where LaTeX is very, very good at. It's to produce good text and uh, well-formatted text. Uh, do you see what happens to FI here uh, in the text for first or here in the title for first? Okay, the F and the I are just printed together as an, um, a unique letter. This is a ligature. This is a, a very old practice in, uh, uh, in, um, uh, for printers. Uh, they do this uh, since, uh, since uh, Gutenberg. This is because uh, first, uh, this is more readable, we'll see later. Um, if you put curly braces between the F and the I, so what you say to the compiler, this is important to understand, you say, okay, here read an F, and say, what, go, what is next? Curly braces, okay, so it's not a ligature, I put the F, and then I go what is inside uh, curly braces, inside this group we have made. Uh, oh, nothing, okay, no problem, I continue, and then I print an I. What is the result? The result is, well, this ugly thing uh, with uh, an F, which has, you know, this little head, which is meant for a beautiful font. We have this uh, little head on the F, but you have the point of the of the eye just next to it. This is, they're very ugly. So, why is this important? Because the, this is not the only uh, thing that ligature can do. Here, is what ligature uh, mainly can do for punctuation, for example. So um, sometimes you want to um, put a character you don't have on the keyboard, so you have two ways to do it. Uh, e either a command, which is sometimes long. You see on the right, these are commands for, uh, for uh, producing what is in the middle column. So this is not ver very good uh, when you read uh, the, the source file because y you're interrupted b by this big common. So we have another th solution. This is to um, have fonts that have good ligature. Um, most of the fonts in LaTeX have this ligature, uh, these ligatures. Um, so the first one, this is called an N dash. Do you see what is called an N dash? Compare with the M dash, which is just beneath. Yeah, so this is, in fact, uh, the the width of the character, which is uh, uh, an M. Uh, the M is uh, um, a length that is defined uh, by the width of the letter M. Okay, so then N is okay, uh, the uh, um, an half of uh, M. Okay. Uh, what are they used for? Uh, the first one is mostly, y um, in fact, you know when you put only one, um, um, what do you call that? You know, one mana sign, um, this uh, one dash, this produces a little dash which is used mainly uh, in words. For example, uh, electroencephalogram, you have a dash between, uh, an if and dash. And uh, this dash is only meant for separation. You can't use it anywhere else. This is mostly wrong. Uh, then you have the end dash, which is uh, meant for uh, separating, for example, a list of pages. A page from uh, three, uh, pages from three to eight, you will output pages. And then three, you can put an end dash, eight. This is the, the character you should use uh, between, you shall use, I mean, between um, uh, um, this kind of list, this kind of interval. Then the M dash, uh, you might have seen it in, um, in good uh, typographic documents. This is uh, used um, mostly like parentheses, or uh, this is an insist. This is uh, when you want to say something that is not really part of uh, what you're saying, but uh, that might be important. It can be ironic or, or things like that. Um, then you have quotation marks. Uh, 
And the last two, one uh, you may know from Spanish, with part of the punctuation from Spanish. Uh, if this is very present in the Spanish text, you, you'll be uh, happy to use uh, just the ligature on the left and not the common on the right, which is quite long. Okay? So, is it clear that this is just the font that, uh, the, you know what is a font? Okay, this is the collection of characters you put on the paper. Um, this is the, the role of the font to provide this lig ligature, and most of the fonts used will LaTeX provide this ligature. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so we talk uh, about uh, the, you know, the accent, the A with a ring, but okay, now I have a, a, a QWERTY keyboard, and uh, so I can't use uh, this A with a ring, but I have to typeset my document in Swedish. They non don't know how to do it. There is a solution. This is how you put, um, this is called accents, but it's also diacritics. Uh, this diacritics, so, uh, all this little modification you can see in many languages on letters. So you can all, um, you, you, you can make all these uh, ligatures and maybe more uh, using other library. Um, okay, do you see why? Sometimes, uh, we have put, uh, for example, um, on the first line we have a backslash, a character, then the O, and on the fifth line we have the back backslash, the H, and between curly braces, the O. Any ID? Sorry? Yes, we, we can put anything in between curly braces. Uh, in fact, all cases works if you put the O between uh, uh, curly braces. But why it's not needed in the first, uh, second, and then uh, all cases may except H, C, K, B, D, R, U, V, T. Any idea? This is because simply the um, the char uh, a, a character used uh, as a command cannot appear in a all common name. So if it appears, it's it must be the last one on in the command. So then we know that the letter is not part of the name of the command. Okay, this is just little rule, uh, but it can avoid you putting curly braces everywhere in the document. So if you're not sure, put bra braces, uh, but you can uh, avoid them most of the time. Uh, in fact, when we have, uh, for example, uh, text ba um, backslash C and the O, if we haven't put curly braces, um, this, this will have called the common CO, which do uh, whatever it's defined for. I mean, maybe nothing, and it can output, it can output an error, like uh, the macro was not defined or things like that, okay? Yes? How do you produce the backslash? Okay, it's, it was a little in the beginning, but uh, you know it's a command uh, for that, which is called text backslash. So to produce uh, an explicit backslash, you have to, to use the command, which is called text backslash. Okay? So it's not that frequent, and we will see that we have b uh, better ways to, to display um, these kind of characters, uh, not having to escape all of them. For example, I've made the slide uh, uh, here uh, with LaTeX. So you see it's not possible just to produce uh, uh, reading do uh, documents made for reading, but also presentation. Um, and uh, you, you can see there is a lot of backslash. I didn't have used uh, uh, um, text backslash everywhere. This, this will be horrible. So we have all the solutions, but we'll see later. Okay, for, for diacritics, uh, here is not a good example, but you, you can use other letters uh, that are more frequent. For example, on the right, you have the O with a ring, which 
is not very useful, especially in Swedish. But the A with a ring uh, works the same. Okay, this is the, the same for all letters. Uh, sorry, it's here it's replaced by more more used uh, letter with the diacritic. Uh, it's um, it's related, so I put it here. Uh, if you want to put a second flex on an I, uh, this is this will produce what is below. If ever it doesn't produce this, this may hap happen on some LaTeX installation. You replace the I with the common that has for name I, and this common produces an I without the point, because in on some installation you may obtain an I with the point and with the circumflex uh, accent in it, which is not what you want to obtain. Okay, so it's just a little tip. Uh, if you encounter some problem with the with the I, uh, which is which the oh sorry with this I, um, otherwise uh, you should uh, use your keyboard to produce this I. You you don't have to use this on most keyboard. You can produce directly this I. Then so, what do we have now uh, for our be basis for a document? So the preamble. This is what I recommend to use for preamble um, as a basis. I mean, you can replace it with what you want, but if you don't know what to put in the preamble, at least put this. So first, what well the document class, class uh, with um, an option now. Uh, so the option is A4 paper. This is the size of the output, because if you want, you can produce whatever you want. I mean, uh, A A5 or other things we'll see later. Then input encoding to read your file in the good way, in the right way. Then this is you, you don't ask why, but uh, this is important. Okay, for some characters they may. Uh, in fact, we, we've t we've um, talked about uh, uh, the input encoding, but you have to choose an output encoding for your file to be uh, readable. So, uh, to produce this output encoding, uh, you need to precise something. So, this is what this command is used for. Okay? Then, this is for you, uh, most of you. This is the package called Babel. So, you might know some things about the myth of Babel. It's about languages. Uh, here's here I it's uh, how, um, how uh, LaTeX will support languages. Uh, for example, uh, Babel may define uh, some shorter commands to produce um, uh, special characters that are very frequ frequent in uh, in uh, a language. For example, when you use German, um, this uh, allow you to uh, j you just put um, this double quoting uh, uh, character. And the O, and you don't have to make a common. This is seen as a ligature. Okay, no, I restart. Okay, we've seen that when you want to put an umlaut on an O, just uh, this uh, kind of character that is used in German on O, uh, you I and it's not on your keyboard. You have to use backslash, the the quotation mark with the double quotation mark and the O, okay, maybe in curly braces. So it's a command. But if you have Babel with German, this is uh, so useful to have a ligature for this uh, umlaut O that Babel defined it for you because it, this is a very frequent character. So you don't need uh, any more the backslash at the beginning. Okay, this is more clear? And then you can start. Um, you have seen that in Babel you can uh, tell uh, Babel to use two languages, two different languages. Um, I have to admit that I don't know what the Swedish languages does exactly, but you might want to use it. And then when you're uh, stronger in LaTeX, you will look what it does really. Um, if you have to switch bec between languages, so you declare both English and Swedish, 
the later one is used, always in this command. If you want to change uh, during the document, you, have, you just have to select language. This is a command that is defined by um, the library Babel, by the package Babel. Okay? Yes? So we have plenty of other document classes, so you can replace uh, the class name by whatever you want. Minimal is meant for testing. Uh, you will see uh, it in exercises that I will put uh, on the web. Um, then you have um, article, um, uh, IEEE trans and proc, which was mostly the same. Uh, um, IE trans is meant for um, IE publication, if you know the, uh, this uh, um, institution. And then you have for bigger things, you have report, book, and memoir. Um, this uh, class name are meant for more than 10, maybe 20 pages. You will see the differences also in exercises. Beamer is, main, in, is meant for um, slides. And uh, letter is meant for producing letter. Uh, for all this... Um, uh, class that are very uh, common, that are standardized, and you will find uh, in every distribution you have options. Uh, the, f the, um, the first line is about the size of the font, then you have the size of the paper. You can choose title page or no title page. That means, you've seen when we produced our first document, we have the title, then the text. Okay, somewhat, in if you, you have a bigger uh, document, um, we find useful to have the title page, then you turn and the document starts, okay? Uh, one column, two column, this is if you want columns. Um, landscape, if you want to turn the page, uh, one quadrant. Um, one side, two side. This is important. Why? Y you might think that uh, in a PDF you don't have uh, one side and two side. You know, you don't turn your screen to look back to the document. This is all just pages. Okay, but when you produce document, you have ma ma margins. Okay, on the left, on the right, and bottom, and the top. And uh, when you um, fold uh, a big document. This will take some place on the left side for uh, the, the um, odd uh, page and on the right side for the even page. So you see that uh, margins will not be the same on the left and the right side depending on the uh, number of your page. Okay, so this is why this, Im this is important because if you say one side, there is only one side, so uh, all um, pages are, are seen as um, odd pages, like the first one, this means with margin on the left, you don't have something written on the back of the paper, and for two side, this is uh, the country. Okay? Uh, then we'll see later. Uh, this is time for a break, I think. So we'll see in uh, 15 minutes. to produce our first document, but we don't know, we have, I think we, we have sentences, but we don't know how to group this in paragraph, maybe in sections, chapter, I don't know, anything else. Um, so first, we'll talk about paragraph, because this is the important part. Um, sorry. Okay, so here I have a text that is far too long. Why is it too long uh, here? This is the text that was in my tech file. Uh, I keep it uh, this long because um, uh, I, I want to show you that often you work on maybe 80 characters large or things like that. So uh, where you break the line is not important. Here we have break the line at otherwise. And uh, you see otherwise is here, and there is no line to break here, okay? So we have the paragraph that is composed linearly, and even you can see that LaTeX produces alone 
this definition. I mean, it cut the word by itself. This is one wall of Babel. Babel a uh, lot of definition uh, on how to break words. Um, this, okay, this part of the text was not visible, but it's just, uh, I've just write, um, uh, just wrong, written, sorry. I've just written uh, multiple uh, without uh, dash uh, in it, without if in, in it. And uh, uh, take, uh, LaTeX does the, the trick. Then, how to produce a new paragraph? Just leave an empty line. By empty, I mean a line that contains only kind of spaces character. This can be spaces or tabulation, uh, what, whatever you want here, as long as you don't have a, a printable character. Um, for this empty line, uh, tells uh, LaTeX to start a new paragraph. Here is the paragraph. Okay, so there is a word in this paragraph that is not very long, but that don't want to break. Here we have a problem. Uh, the word is too large and it's, it, it goes far uh, uh, away in the margin. This is not good, this is what you want. This may uh, appear sometimes. Here, I forced LaTeX to do it. Uh, often you can write, uh, I mean, 100 pages and never encounter this kind of things. But it may happen, so I show you uh, quickly how to avoid this. First, you want to detect this uh, quickly when you proofread your document. You don't want to read each line and, and say, okay, is it uh, a line? Okay, no, maybe. So, uh, if you remember, we've seen that you can put uh, options in your document class. One of these options is draft. You know what is draft? This is when you're not sure of your document and this is just a working document. Um, so we add this and what does it produce? Produce a little uh, a black uh, square or rectangle that shows you when you have problems with lines. For example, here the line is too full, uh, everything goes on the same line. There is a problem. So we'll see later how, um, now how to solve it. First solution, this is where you find the common that I uh, talked to you about uh, at the beginning and that was uh, an error, that was wrong. So we, we may think that here it's enough to break the line here. Then no problem with uh, this, uh, where that uh, won't break. Okay, we try. This is ugly, isn't it? This, okay. This is supposed to go up to the end of the line. In fact, this comment um, doesn't tell um, uh, LaTeX that you are in a paragraph. It tells LaTeX to start something like a paragraph, uh, at, on in fact, just a new line, and no matter what goes next. So it's not good. So we may want to try this. Okay. This. This is meant for, I've read the documentation and I've browsed the web and I've seen that this line break is meant to tell LaTeX, okay, now if you want, you can break the line as you want. Um, this number is how you want this to be uh, just an advice or an order. Uh, if you put uh, one, this is just um, a little advice, but if, if it doesn't do what you want, there's no problem, you don't mind. Um, four is an order, a total order. You can't, uh, LaTeX can't avoid it. It will do what you want uh, him to do. This is not the first time you will see some this uh, kind of arguments. Uh, this is documented uh, on, the, on the common, so you will find it, for example, on the web. Okay, here it doesn't work. It's not enough for LaTeX to break the line, um, but why? Okay, so we think we're better than a computer, than the algorithm that is behind, and we say, okay, LaTeX, just break the line here. This is an order. So it does. But here we see why he won't do that uh, if you don't tell him, uh, and why he don't want to do that. 
This is because space, um, spaces between words are too large. This is not uh, cool. Uh, here it's not very important because this is very short, but when we have a long text, sometimes when you use word, this is what happens. You have uh, very long spaces between words, and uh, once you, you, you're, you are on this line, uh, you're stopped. You're like, oh, what is this? And you can't read, you know, it's, eh. Okay, me I can't. Maybe you can. Um, but things that you don't produce the document for you, so if some people are hurted by this kind of thing, you, shouldn't produ you should not produce this. So we have a better way. In fact, monospace could be broken between mono and space. Just like I didn't know. So we just have to tell him, okay, now this is how you will infinite monospace. So we have a command which is called infinition and which accepts a list of words separated by spaces. And uh, within this word, you put uh, this iPhone. This is just um, a tip for, uh, I mean, a mark for LaTeX to know where to break. It doesn't mean that the, this character will be produced everywhere in the text. If there is no line to break here, uh, monospace will be uh, output as usual. Okay? So here it is far better. In fact, maybe not because there is this kind of little word uh, uh, all along the line. M maybe the paragraph is longer than that, not just th three lines. So it doesn't matter. Um, the longer the paragraph or the better the algorithm is. This is important to keep in mind. If you have two short paragraphs, this may happen that you're not quite satisfied by the result. If ever you are totally unsatisfied, just, ch just change one word in your paragraph. There is no reason that it fails again because there is plenty of solutions. Uh, and if you, send, uh, you, you change just one word in most of the case, you have a better solution after that, because this is very rare. So we have seen how to break line where we want, if LaTeX doesn't do it. Now, if we want to keep things on the same line, uh, we have a problem with that. Uh, maybe it could happen that it uh, LaTeX breaks something thinking that it can, and you don't want it. And we have seen also that LaTeX eats spaces uh, in front of uh, comments or afterwards. So uh, how, how do we do if we want to put more than one uh, space? Um, you have two different solutions, which are quite equi equivalent. First, here is the problem. We have a, f uh, a phone number, OK? The output is not exactly what you want. In fact, I forgot a point here. But uh, also, the phone number is uh, broken in two parts, which is not really what you want. So two ways. You modify your sentence to keep it together. But if later you modify again your sentence, there is no reason that this uh, works afterwards. So we have better than that. We use the command mbox, which, uh, which means uh, make box. So it puts all uh, its arguments into a kind of box, which is unbreakable. So then it is uh, seen as a single character by LaTeX. When, when LaTeX arrives here, so it's reading to make uh, the paragraph, uh, it breaks, uh, come here. Then it says this big character that is not a, a character in no, but a big character. And he knows that the character can't fit here. So he put it on the next line as if it was a word that is unbreakable. Okay? Uh, you may think that this can uh, uh, produce uh, the type of thing that we've seen with monospace. It's exactly the type of thing we, we, we were trying to remove before. Uh, okay, maybe, but you will see better uh, something uh, that is too long on in the margin when you proofread uh, than a number which is just 
cut between two lines. So better produce the something that is so y so um, awful that you see you see it immediately than something that you might maybe see later later um, perhaps after publication, which is not good. Uh, so here we use inbox because we want this to be seen as a kind of word together, a word that is unbreakable. Sometimes you have two words, two real words, we're talking about Mr. So-and-so, and this Mr. So-and-so, we don't want to break between Mr. and so-and-so, this goes together, okay? Uh, this is how you want to typeset all these kind of things. Uh, maybe sometimes this is the first name and the last name you don't want to break, or uh, the middle name you want to keep with the first name. You know, whether you have uh, Donald Knuth, by, uh, for example, uh, his middle name uh, starts with an E, so you have Donald E. Knuth. So Donald E, you want to keep it together. You don't want to have a line um, broken between Donald and then E. Knuth. This is not what you want. So how do, do we do? Here we don't want it to be seen really as um, you know, a single unbreakable uh, um, word. W we just want to join two words so that they stay together. So we have this kind of, of um, tile. So the tile is uh, this, you know, this wave. This is the little wave uh, which is on every uh, keyboard. And um, this is not outputted as uh, uh, a tile. This is this produce an unbreakable space. So this space can't be broken between two lines. So here we have together Mr. Sun. So the line is not very, very good. And in fact, uh, LaTeX um, inform you when you compile, you have uh, like every languages, you have error and warning. And in the warning, you will see that this line is seen as very good uh, by LaTeX. So maybe we want to, uh, when we have um, finished all the document, and it's, it's just you know proofreading you know, just before pu publication, you might want to change it a little to avoid this kind of uh, ugly things. So. <laughs> We have seen uh, one of uh, our problem. The next one is about spaces. Uh, you may want to put spaces um, between words. We have seen that spaces between words can grow uh, as far as uh, LaTeX ones, maybe, for the algorithm, um, or can be uh, uh, compressed. Or we, so this is, sorry, this is an interword spacing forced. So if you put three things like that, they may expand at three interword space. So for the line we have seen before that were um, very stretched out, these three spaces will, will be very stretched out, three times more than others because there are three. Okay. So this is this kind of uh, uh, elastic space. Okay. Here you can put horizontal space, which have a length you define. This may be useful if you want, for example, uh, write something uh, far from the margin. Okay, far away from the margin, maybe three centimeters. Maybe this is a kind of title or things like that. Or you want to separate two things uh, in a title. Or okay. So we can put these things and we can also put um, this vertical space, which is between lines. So you, m you may see, this is important, this little star. This is an alternate meaning of the command. This is uh, very frequent that uh, you have a LaTeX command that have a kind of equivalent with a star. The meaning of the command with the star depends on the command and you have to search what it means, but here, uh, this kind of spaces may disappear. For example, uh, you, you have these spaces between two words, but the line is broken between these two words. Then these spaces disappear totally, because LaTeX doesn't know where it should uh, be put. 
at the end of the first line or at the beginning of the second. There is no rule for that and there is no need to keep this space. If ever you want uh, this to be seen as a real space, you put a star and the algorithm will see this space as a word that could mm, be kept on the first line or that can go to the second line. Okay, So it will never disappear. The same goes for uh, this at the beginning of a page or at the end of a page. Okay, a little about length because you will see them again later. I will talk about it uh, maybe next time more. Uh, you have some units, some are very common, millimeter, centimeter. You might know point, which is not exactly the same that uh, we use on screen, but this is uh, a point. And uh, the inch for a uh, royal uh, uh, unit. And then you might recognize this. An M. I told you about this. This is the width of the letter M. So this is pretty useful for horizontal spacing. But for ve vertical spacing, uh, there is no need of something that measures the width of the M because if the font have, uh, has very large M, it doesn't tell you anything about the height of the, or the letters. So we have also the X, uh, which is quietly the um, height of one, one x, okay? And this length, which is, which is elastic, uh, this is not exactly what is used in uh, interval spacing, but uh, we'll see later what it can be used for. You have uh, some pretty fine spaces. Here is for horizontal. Uh, you know, it's just uh, um, multiple, uh, it's two times the previous one each time. And here is uh, what it represents uh, compared to the front. Okay, here is the same for vertical space. And on the right, this is how this is defined. So when you put a Medscape, in fact, this is read by LaTeX. This is a command that expands, that is seen by LaTeX as a vertical space, which uh, is uh, the length med Medscape amount. You can change this length for the for your document. Okay, this is an example of customization you might want to do. Uh, it's just a little bit about elastic spaces. I will come over it again later. But uh, this is how you can. Uh, for example, this one is interesting uh, because I've put the plus. So here you have what is uh, what the common I've entered in my text file. And what is the output? Uh, the output is the plus goes on the left margin and the plus on the right goes on the right margin. And here, this is um, exactly uh, at, the, at one third of the page. Exactly. Okay? So you might want to do this. The equivalent, uh, you have two equivalent of uh, this uh, horizontal spacing that's stretched uh, as long as you want. One uh, produce a line, one produce dots. It can be useful when uh, you're typesetting some um, documents that needs to um, have fields or things like that. Okay, we've seen that default, by default, uh, LaTeX justify the text. Now, what this mean? It tries to keep things against the left margin and the right margin. Sometimes you don't want. For example, um, uh, in a newspaper, uh, you have a very n narrow column and you can't justify things because it will be um, some yes, awful. Uh, if you see, you have only three words on the line and if they are not exactly the size of the column, we have extra space everywhere. This can be better to keep this space at the end. So we have this R uh, environment. So I, how to you how you how you will use uh, this environment if you want to produce that. So here is exactly the same text as default: uh, uh, a line on the left, a line on the right, and centered. Um, so how to use it? This is begin and in curly braces flush left, then your text which will be influenced, and you end the environment with the end 
clutch that. Okay. Just stop stop me if uh, anything is not clear. Then we'll see how to uh, break the document. So we have paragraph, but we we want uh, insert a title uh, like sections or subsections, something like that. So here are the command that you want to use. Um, often we start only at this point, section, but uh, this one are also important. So uh, you can break uh, things in part. A part is often when you speak about a really, really different subject. There is n no real link between or uh, the only link will come in a third part of your document. So there is no, li no link at the first reading and you can read uh, it mostly uh, separate. So here you have the document class, class you use because the, this common are redefined by the document class. This means that they don't behave the same uh, depending on the document class you, you use. Uh, you, you will see in the exercises that you can, if you want to go through the ex exercises, that you can test uh, the, the behavior uh, of LaTeX with uh, this different document class. Uh, so you have essentially you have section, subsection, sub subsection, paragraph, sub paragraph, and uh, chapter is important in book because you want to break things in book with, um, um, I mean, a beautiful page for starting uh, a chapter while a section is just running uh, in the text. Yes? Sorry? No, I, I would say no. In fact, uh, because all this is, uh, is defined by LaTeX for uh, using tech uh, underneath, if you want, and if you're uh, strong enough with tech, you can build your own uh, common to enlarge this. Maybe, I don't know, uh, we could check it uh, at the end, but maybe there is um, uh, uh, an extension, uh, a package that define all those common that can go far uh, enough. But often you don't need more than five uh, subsections. Yes, you need? <laughs> Okay, we, we, we can go through it uh, after this part. So here is how you use it. These are just comments. So you put you the argument here is the title of uh, your, your section or subsection, etc. Here is the result. This is what we obtain. Okay, so this is, you can see that all numeration, all numbers here are fully automatic. You don't need to put the numbers, which is very important because if you decide that um, this subsection finally uh, should go before the first one, no problem. In fact, the title will be wrong because the it won't be my first perception. You don't need to put the number in the title. So, but it will reorder everything and renumerate everyth everything. Okay. So, in, and now y you can see that this is not exactly um, sexy or titles. Also, uh, it's clear. I mean, it's very clear, but it's not very sexy. So, uh, how to change the style of that? Uh, I strong strongly recommend you, if you're interested, to look in the LaTeX companion and search. There is an index. You search for at start section. This is a special command that allow you uh, to to change the behavior of this section commands. This is not very difficult to use, and uh, at the end of this course you can use it. So, if you're very interested, you can try it. Then, how to produce a table of contents at the beginning of the document, just use the command. It's some kind of command that is uh, like um, uh, make title or things like that. This produces exactly what you want. So you have my first section, my first, here are the two um, 
two subsections, uh, then followed by a sub subsection. Okay? And then on the right, you have pages for this. Um, this is fully automatic, including this contents title. But if you're writing in another language, Babel should change that. So you, you don't have to bother on that word. It will change automatically uh, with the use of Babel, which I told you before. Okay? Uh, if ever you want, it's possible. You might search uh, on the web or in the LaTeX companion, which is uh, very detailed on this point. But if you see here, it goes up to the sub subsection. This might not be what we, we want because uh, in our document this is rare and it's somewhat anecdotic and we don't want to it to appear in the table of content. Okay? So we can change that using this command. This is not just meant for that. A counter is uh, exactly what is used to for the numeration here. Okay? So if you want to know more about counter, we can uh, talk about it uh, later, or you can search through the web, but pra practice a little before counter. I have avoided to talk uh, about this today because I think it's a little advanced. So if you're already a little advanced when coming here, uh, you might want to take a look. This is very interesting, and you can um, do very beautiful things with it because this is all automatic. So we change the depth of the table of content with this counter and we don't want it to go um, um, more uh, as far as uh, the subsection, okay? So the sub-subsection, I mean. And it does exactly what we wanted, okay? The sub-subsection is removed here but still appear in our document. Okay, this is not correlated. Yes, maybe a little abstract of your document may be useful. So you have this environment, you put the text in it, and then you have your abstract. Okay, sectioning a document in LaTeX is maybe the most easy thing you've ever uh, done before. Walking was so uh, far harder. Okay, so this um, some sometimes you have sections and you w want to refer to another section, but because uh, numeration is uh, automa uh, automatic, you don't want to say uh, see um, uh, section three page uh, nine because maybe uh, later this will not be uh, uh, the section three, maybe two or four, because you have added another section or removed one. And uh, this may not be on the same page. So we have uh, a tool for that, which is called referencing. So after the command that defines the section, you can put a label. This is not just for section. I, this is for all, so all sectioning commands and eventually for other common that are aware of that, we'll see later this is used in mathematics, for example, uh, with equation. You want to refer to an equation, but sometimes you've seen in book that equations are numbered, and uh, you want to refer to one of these equations. Uh, this is also this common which is used. So in it, I just put a word. This is whatever you want, just try to avoid some kind of special characters, you're not sure how they can be uh, interpreted by a LaTeX output. Maybe only ASCII. Okay. Uh, this is the, the, the show way to do it. Um, I think the um, at uh, character is accepted, but uh, is not necessary. Uh, you can use also um, the um, Ah, I don't want the word in English. The um, this the, um, the colon, you know, these two points, the colon. Uh, in it, uh, we'll see later that I it's useful when you have m um, a lot of label and you want to separate 
uh, labels which refers to sections, label which refers to figures, labels which refers to equations, because it will be easier to keep tra track uh, of this. <coughs> and um, to then to, to talk about this section, you need to use the common ref and page ref. You might not, you, you may use only one of them, not uh, both each time. If you just want, if this is a short document and you just want to refer to the section, this is useful. But when you have 10, 20, 50, 150 pages, uh, this is us useful for your reader to have uh, the page where the section was. Okay, and this is very important that you compile two times. Why uh, LaTeX needs here two times to compile the document? This is because when it first read, this may be that you, ref you may refer to a section which, com which comes after. So at the time uh, where um, LaTeX, uh, uh, when LaTeX uh, um, comes through ref, he reads the label and says, OK, I don't know where it is. So you would see that it uh, outputs a question mark, and that's all. Then, and second time, because it, uh, it writes a lot of auxiliary files, which you can see uh, when you open the directory, when you have your source files, uh, you will see that in this uh, document, LaTeX uh, writes that he knows now where is the label. So on the second com uh, compilation, he can write the good number uh, here or here, okay? So if you don't understand why uh, you have two, uh, you have a question mark, or if you in a hurry, you have proofread your document, but you want to compile it again, so you remove the PDF and you compile it, please compile it two, three times maybe, okay? So you be sure everything is exactly uh, as it should be and you will not give uh, a document which contains um, question mark and things like that. Uh, why LaTeX doesn't detect that it needs? Yes? Um, first, is it's just text, but you have an extension uh, which you can note, which is uh, called uh, hyperref. So it is hyper from hyperlink, and you, repen re you replace link by ref, and then all the ref command uh, gives a link in the PDF. This only works with PDF LaTeX. If you remember, you can compile with LaTeX or PDF LaTeX. A LaTeX will pr produce a DVI which can't support uh, this type of uh, hypertext link. So, uh, in this case, you, um, this is mandatory, you use PDF LaTeX, but most of you will use PDF LaTeX, in fact. Okay. You might want also to produce these little notes. Uh, I don't know if you can see all, uh, maybe the front uh, row counts, but okay. Um, this is just a little uh, a comment on what we are talking about. Maybe uh, a very, very small reference or an advice for the reader. So this is not something uh, that is uh, mandatory to read. So you can put this using the command footnote. So you use, after the word you want to uh, footnote, you want to note about, you use the command footnote with the text you want in the footnote, okay? LaTeX produces all the rest, okay? This is produced by LaTeX, the, the little one is here is produced by LaTeX. If you have multiple uh, citations, uh, footnote in the same uh, uh, page, uh, they will be numbered uh, automatically and so on, okay? Here you can see this verb command. This is what I was talking about when I uh, told you that you can output uh, uh, backslash without, proti without uh, saying text backslash uh, entirely. And you see that it produces this kind of, of uh, verbatim text, which is uh, the text exactly uh, as I brought in. Uh, this is a special command bec because this is inherited from tech. And in tech, you can put, sometimes in some commands, you can put um, 
something different from the curly braces. So here you can put whatever you want as soon as this character is not present in the verbatim text. Because this is what is uh, used to detect the end of the verb common. Okay? So here I, I, I can use, for example, a plus. I can use uh, braces also because I don't use br uh, curly braces inside. Uh, mostly any character points if I want. The first character is um, a latex is awaiting the first character to reappear before uh, terminating the command. Okay, now you see, okay, uh, we have a document, it's uh, okay in parts, it's mostly clear. I, tol I told you, you can change the style of uh, titles. Okay, so for that, we need to change the font. We must want a larger font, uh, a bold font, or something like that. So here is how you do this. Um, I let you go through this because I'm a little late. So this is quite easy. You have just comments with arguments. Or you can use it uh, as a selector, as a switch. In fact, if you s inside, uh, in fact, when you use this command, uh, whatever comes after would, will, will, will be compelled to using the Roman family. So if you have questions, we can see later but I'm a little late, okay? But this is not very difficult. Here, this is important. This is how you keep um, uh, um, presentation and semantics uh, se uh, separated, always separated. When you use here uh, text it, which is used to italicize, italize, uh, I can't, uh, okay, in italics, <laughs> um, Y this is uh, this use uh, direct directly the font, but you this uh, interfere uh, with your with what you are saying. So you can use some kind of comments like emph for emph emphasizing, which uh, switch to italize. Okay, like this, but better you can switch back if you want to emphasize something that it is that is in italics, it switched back to a uh, Roman family, just up shape, you know, this letter, this classical letter. Okay? Uh, this here is the verb is coming with plus. Stop me if something is not clear. Um, then the size, you have comments that change the size from now on. Okay? So, for example, here when you select huge, uh, what comes after is big, and then, after the curly braces, uh, we are in a group, so th this comment has no effect anymore. And then uh, we are back the font we had before. Okay? Okay, now we'll see how to define comments. Or you might say, uh, is this the good place to. We are just beginning LaTeX and you want them to define comments. Okay. This is important because this is again how you separate syntax and semantic. Okay, how you separate the presentation from what you want to say. Exactly. As from the for the emphasized comment. This is al also easier if you change your man mind and uh, maybe you think that um, em em emphasizing is not uh, uh, done by uh, italis uh, italics but done by boldface uh, or anything else. This is easier because you don't need to go through all your documents to change every occurrence of text there. You just change the definition of uh, emph emphasizing and then you get what you want. Um, this can be also easier to use because sometimes you have uh, um, multiple comments you use every time uh, you have a certain situation. You want to typeset something, a title, uh, an example, an exercise, uh, in a way. So you use plenty of comments to have exactly what you want. But if you uh, forget one of the comments, you don't have any more what you, were, what you wanted. So you can put this together in just one comment and you're sure that all is in it. An example. This is not very difficult. So this is use the command no, no, new command. Here you give the name of the command, like that. Okay. Then you have 
an optional argument, where in squared braces for LaTeX, which uh, defines the number of arguments uh, that will be uh, needed for uh, this common. For example, if I want KTH to have three arguments, I need to put three in square brackets here, just here. Then comes the definition. Okay, so here I put techniques scalars colon. Uh, and then in, uh, I italicize uh, the English version. And then I use it. And this is exactly what I want to have. I'm the output. Um, do you understand why this little comment character? In fact, you have seen that uh, new lines are seen as, as uh, spaces, or if you have not, you will see later. So as new line is seen as spaces, if ever KTH is used in the source file at the beginning of the line, so you have already a new line here, then a new line here, if you don't put the, the pr uh, person, uh, person uh, character, uh, then uh, this means that you have an empty line. So will you will have a paragraph. This is not what you want. So avoid spaces before the command, OK? Um, another example, uh, what do you, do you think this will work? Based on the title, no. Okay, this, produce, this does not produce exactly what we wanted. So we use tiny, which is defined in the size uh, text. Uh, well I'll go a little quickly on it, but tiny uh, switch on, uh, next to the wha wha what happens. Here is the sharp. The sharp is uh, used uh, to refer to uh, the argument. This is the same as in Perl for who uh, so, um, for them for you if you know. Um, so Perl, uh, you can refer to the argument by numbers. Here the same. You don't have names or types for arguments. Just have numbers. Uh, so. This, this does not produce what we want because here curly braces are not included. They are part of the definition of a new command, not, not part of the result of a new command. So the solution is to put, again, curly br braces to protect the content. Okay? This puts exactly what you want. Even if the command is awful because, uh, please, don't do this kind of thing with size changing uh, in a line. It's just for... 